So this is interesting. This is our first ever taping of the upper bench, and we have a, a very distinguished distinguished guest today, Lassi Liikkanen. My name is Eero Hello. Kilpi, or Eero Kilpi, how it's pronounced in Finnish, and I've been involved with saunas all my life, which is more than 60 years, and I've been the president of the North American Sauna Society uh, at least 15 years, and, and I was one of the founding members. We started ourselves 2004. Uh, Christopher, who are you? Hi, uh, Christopher Rice, or my sauna name would be Risto because I learned that that's the shortened Finnish name of Christopher. So, and I like that. Um, and I've just been a kind of accidentally stumbled into like the Finnish practice of sauna about seven years ago, myself and my family. Um, so we're just sauna lovers. Whereas one person said sauna hounds. And Sam, you. Yeah, uh, good morning or afternoon for or evening for Lassie. Um, my name's Sam. I'm with uh, the Reddit group, uh, our sauna. Um, I've been a sauna enthusiast since I was uh, pretty much a little kid, always being the one to uh, to go jump in the sauna with all the uh, all the adults while all the kids swam. So um, always kind of an oddball in that group, but I've built my own saunas. I'm currently building another one. I love it. Um, I'm looking forward to, to speaking with Lassie today to hopefully learn some tips and tricks on making my own sauna builds better. Thank you. And uh, and as as the the uh, listeners can understand, so we are three hosts. That's the whole idea. We've been talking sauna, and and uh, and in the future episodes, we either have some people coming over to our podcast or not. But but that that's the uh, that's the system how it's supposed to go. So Lassie, welcome so much. It's uh, it's you are where are you actually right now? Hello, all the uh, sauna loving people around the world, wherever you are. Um, Yes, my name is Lars Sinik, and I'm currently here uh, in Finland. So my time zone is like seven hours ahead of these other guys uh, <clears throat> in this recording. So it's pretty much like dusk already here. I'm here at the kind of uh, like less than 20 kilometers from the current Russian border. And I hope it stays that way uh, for the foreseeable future uh, at our cabin. Um, I'm currently kind of being uh, sitting here in the uh, kind of multifunctional room uh, that we've built in uh, the sauna cabin that I that got me kind of really started in the sauna design things about seven years ago so this particular room around me has existed about six years now and um, has been quite a um, lot of inspirational and very kind of also functional thing for me but from Finland so not nice so you have Elasa you have a PhD and like I do actually also I have a PhD so so why are we I have to start with these kind of stupid questions. I'm, I'm good at those. So, so why are we even talking about sauna here? <laughs> what, what makes us <laughs> tick? Well, well, um, I mean, the sauna culture, uh, particularly for the people who've been born in Finland, born and raised in Finland, they probably are what would you call like sauna natives. So, um, there's no kind of a, in, in Finland, it's pretty difficult to start any conversation about it the why of sauna because everyone has kind of got pretty much like a kind of yeah sauna is a thing that we do uh, no question about that um but then again i mean uh, for some people then this kind of sauna i mean we, so we talk about that the finland is a country of like five and a half million people and we say always say this a little bit jokingly that there are like 5.5 5, 5.5 million sauna experts in finland but uh <laughs> then again we also have um that's actually not quite true because only about like 90 percent of finnish people actually go to sauna um when they're adults and uh, on the other hand like uh some people start to take sauna uh matters more seriously over the time or even maybe at a young age i personally kind of it took me about like 35 years to kind of discover my new uh, secret sauna site when I uh, decided that it was time for me to start building something very like concrete and uh, my first real sauna project then got me very much into the uh, kind of art and uh, science of sauna design, which I found, uh, I mean, I've been working uh, my kind of PhD and my uh, kind of professional life has been around 
research and design for about 15 years almost. And so the matters of design has always been quite uh, central to what I do. And then when the time came for me to, in order to really understand or kind of appreciate the um, art of Finnish sound up design and building, I very uh, quickly came to realize that actually um, it's not quite as um, like a spotless or like a foolproof uh, overall understanding as I thought it would be. Uh, instead, I kind of um, stepped into a world when I started to kind of explore the different kind of design decisions that go into creating a com complete sound building. Um, I kind of discovered quite a lot of different interesting kind of uh, uh, differences in opinion and rather a uh, few facts about how Finnish sound is actually made, which was kind of interesting. So uh, as I had this kind of a background of um, studying things, I basically had been working at university for, uh, for Mm, almost a decade uh, before uh, my current uh, job. So I still got this kind of a researcher gene somewhere activating. So I, I got yeah, immediately interested that what, what is this thing about the Finnish sound? What does it actually take to kind of create a really well and functional Finnish uh, sound design? And yeah, I'm still on that way. This uh, The sound building I started building seven years ago has been finished for some time, but uh, the project that I call Saunologia uh, is still ongoing. So, guys, why are we here to talk with Lassi about the Finnish way of sound? We are in North America, after all. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, just even from the, you know, the intro to you know, Lassi's book, I think it wasn't so much that, um, you know, we, we want Finns to have good saunas when they travel around the world. We want everyone to have a, a good sauna wherever they are and, and being able to spread that around. So I love the goal of, of you know, if you're going to do something, do it right and, and, and do it with some culture in mind and do it with some heritage, you know, behind you, because there's a million people that came before all of us and there'll be a million people after us, um, hopefully. But, uh, you know, we want to pass along the, the traditions of our culture and, and to have a, a good experience. Um, I think everybody wants to have a good experience no matter what they do. And a, a poor experience can really turn people off to whatever subject matter that is. So um, if, you want, if you want more sauna friends, um, bring them to a good sauna. Don't bring them to a bad sauna. <laughs> yeah, that, that's very true. Um, Julie, my wife and I, we were at a hotel last night, actually two nights ago in Wisconsin where they have winter time, you know, so they should understand sauna culture. Um, but it was, it's a sauna that was put in, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, it hasn't seen any updating, no ventilation, maybe 12 rocks on the stove. Um, the, you know, it's not a mystery why when people use something like that, they say that eh, that's not for me, you know, it's just kind of yeah. uncomfortably hot and not very nice. So yeah. like Sam was saying, there are consequences for poor expressions of sauna. And then when you experience the good one, you know, a good expression of sauna kind of ruins you for all those other ones. Um, I, I would be curious to know, Lassie, in this past seven years or, you know, since you've been working on your sauna, who are some of the people that have influenced your thinking and your research? Do you have any like sauna mentors, dead or alive, who are the, you're like, these people really influence how I think about sauna. Yeah, that's a great question, because <clears throat> when I initially started this uh, whole project, I thought that uh, this would be kind of over very soon in, in a way that I thought that there, would, there must be, there must be, you know, because of the, uh, the Finnish sauna culture and at least our kind of Finnish, Finnish people are very, uh, not so um, explicitly proud about many things, but one thing that they are proud of is our kind of uh, sauna heritage. And so I thought that there must be a lot of uh, like um, old uh, men or women who have been kind of working on sauna things for ages. And uh, now that I'm interested in starting this kind of project of figuring out, out my perfect sauna, I'll be able to just kind of get in touch with those uh, people and then uh, kind of uh, figure out the kind of right answers uh, quickly. Well, <clears throat> it didn't turn out quite that way uh, because it's actually turned out that the um, in, in the Finnish sauna seen or the kind of most active um, enthusiasts and people who, who had been spending a lot of time thinking about sauna, uh, they had actually been um, like active from say like 1960s to 1980s and um, unfortunately by the late 1990s uh, a lot of the people uh, who'd be writing about uh, sauna doing some research 
were already kind of um, about at retirement age. And uh, by the time I got interested in this stuff, unfortunately, most influential figures of this, this kind of what you'd call like Finnish sound literature or sound design literature were already deceased um, to my demise. And uh, even, even the kind of uh, the only person who wasn't uh, that old, a guy called uh, Pekka Tommila, he was a very influential architect who was writing a lot of uh, books. Um, he had also kind of passed away a little bit on an early age, about around being like around 50. And um, he was probably like last people who've been more seriously trying to write about this um, kind of um, amazing Finnish sound design things uh, from like a very kind of holistic perspective. Uh, so the only kind of uh, like living person I've got the honor to meet and who is still alive is the guy called uh, another architect called Risto Vuola Apiala. Uh, he's particularly known as a um, kind of long-term scholar and uh, proponent of traditional smoke sound culture. So uh, he, he has written a score of books about smoke saunas and a um, few of them have also been translated. And he, uh, he's done kind of such a huge deal of work uh, to preserve the kind of understanding. And also the actual, he, he kind of started um, this um, sauna village uh, thing that's nowadays uh, we've got, it has kind of found its new, uh, new livelihood in the municipality of Yamsa in uh, central Finland, where they have like uh, still this summer, uh, we, I was able to kind of uh, enjoy nine like authentic, very, very old, like uh, generally over 100 years old uh, smoke saunas that are being maintained and actively kind of heated up by uh, volunteers. But this is uh, th this is kind of new uh, bunch of people who have, who, who've been carrying out Risto Bola work, but he was the first person to really kind of do systematic work in order to collect the samples of these old smoke saunas when they were still alive. So I think he, he's been kind of like a very, very much influential person for me, not so much in terms of what he actually thinks about saunas, because I don't really agree with his uh, opinions that much, uh, but uh, more, more as, as, an, as a living example of a person who's really devoted his uh, professional interest and a lot of his uh, time uh, to this matter. So uh, Risto is probably one of, one of those people to mention. And also another mention I'd, I'd like to probably thank is that, um, President of International Sound Association, Mr. Uh, Risto Eloma, who has been kind of very helpful to me over the years, although um, he's more like a uh, behind a uh, scenes guy rather than uh, doing anything himself. But unfortunately, so the situation has been that uh, <clears throat> since like 2010, uh, the film has been a little bit short on like actual sound experts, except for those five and a half million people who. Uh, have become experts on the sound of benches. I would want to ask Christopher, you mentioned that that the sauna you were yesterday had only 12 rocks. Is that like too many or too few? Um, too few. <laughs> too few. Although that sauna, it didn't really matter a whole lot because, like I said, the door blew open whenever you put steam on. So that discouraged you from putting steam on. and and the benches were very low, so all the steam was way above your head. It was uh, it was a pretty frustrating experience. No, yeah, a... The funny, go ahead. I, I I think that's not probably not so unusual for the North American uh, saunas. On the other hand, I have, I have to say that uh, I was just like two hours ago in uh, one Finnish sauna uh, in this kind of municipality swimming hall uh, with the kids, and uh, it also uh, suffered from several kind of um, maybe not so severe. Uh, for instance, it did have ventilation, so it was kind of um, <clears throat> okay. But for instance, it, 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 they had also built the benches were uh, built uh, totally wrong. So there was like um, way too much headroom in the very high, in, so there's impossible to get any good steam and the, uh, the heater was also underpowered. So it, it never kind of, when you put on some uh, water, it will always kind of uh, cool down the whole place for, like 10 minutes. Yeah, I think, I mean, I've discovered that when people are just getting into sauna, you know, especially online, the different things, they'll often ask, like, one of the first questions is, how hot do you like your sauna? But I've noticed from like older Finnish Americans, the question's a little different. They'll say, like, how was the quality of the steam? You know, how was the steam? Um, so that's been something that I've been learning and paying attention to. 
I that's a very good point actually that is a very good point I was talking to this um I I sound a bit every couple of weeks with my good friend in uh, in in Connecticut I live in the, in the New York side but it's a Connecticut border is is only about five minutes from me here and uh and I was talking I was talking to these people and having sauna baited more than 60 years when I go to a sauna I actually don't feel the heat I, I as as a sensation I don't feel the heat I have this enveloping feel but it's not heat that I feel but I do feel so it, it, it's a good feeling but it's 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 not a feeling of heat per se I do feel the steam though but but so I I, th I think th this is a very delicate topic because there's a many many different ways of thermal therapy and there's a lot of people who swear by different different worse versions of uh, versions of thermal therapy at the same time the four of us here I believe very strongly like the authentic the old school and but it, it's very difficult to translate it, it's it's very difficult to to explain to a person what he or she might be missing or compromising when it comes to the you know his or her version of thermal therapy so so what what are the uh you know obviously we want to spread the good word and and we be, believe that that the way we sound debate is the way you know people would like if they would know better but so what are the ingredients what 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 makes what makes a good sauna experience and and uh, and before we go I'm just going to pose my second question after we've spoken about this so coming back to the, what differ, differentiates differentiates the uh the sound abating experience between North America and and uh, say Finland in this case I'll, I'll comment on you know at least what Lassie kind of observed you know with an underpowered heater um I think you know, there, there's a lot of DIY people out there. There's a lot of the wood burning crowd, infrared, you know, everything like that. I think everyone is has an expectation of what they're going to feel in that sauna. And if it doesn't quite meet that expectation or exceed it, then it's it, it maybe it's a uh, it's underperformance or they're perceiving it as as hey, this isn't working how I want it to or, or the best it could when in, in, in all reality, it could be functioning 100% properly. But I think people's expectations when they get in, you know, they, they, they're thinking this crazy high temperature, wet, you know, oh my God, I'm going to be walking into, you know, the sun, but curbing that expectation and, and getting people used to building up to the high temperatures or building up to high steam. Um, it, it's fun to watch people's, you know, kind of uh, realization when they hit really good steam. Um, they just know it. They, they can feel it. You know, Arrow, you touched on it. it. It's not heat. You're not feeling hot. You're feeling this, this all encompassing, like, you know, enveloping, uh, you know, steam, heat, mixture of the, you know, I call it, you know, the, the spirit of the sauna. Um, and, and, and you're feeling that, it, you know, throughout. So I, I think that right there is, is, is something that I'm taking away, you know, from, you know, people here, Christopher, you mentioned it as, you know, it, people don't ask, hey, did you get to 192? No, no, I, I have no idea if I went to 192 or not, but I had a really good song. All right. Uh, if I kind of continue, uh, Era uh, presented two questions, and I'm um, addressing the second one first, as I feel it's uh, kind of a continuation of what we talked about earlier. So I think uh, it's definitely, as Sam said, uh, the expectations for people uh, who are maybe not so familiar with different variations of sauna, and the people coming from Finland are probably huge world apart. You know, where uh, this uh, the sauna native culture of thin basically means that every Finnish person has some kind of expectations of sauna uh, and they are probably going to be quite uniform because the uh, saunas in general in Finland are I mean the uh, <clears throat> amount of variation you can find it but it's uh, a lot of people who are I'd say like under 50 or actually maybe even under 70 nowadays 
have had uh, probably quite a, a similar kind of up, uh, bringing in terms of sauna space encountered in their lives. So they definitely know what to expect from sauna. So a lot of when the Finnish people go around the world, they do kind of uh, find then uh, kind of strange experiences if they go to a sauna in Germany or Canada or in Japan, they might kind of notice the uh, subtle or sometimes very big differences that there are between the sounds. So it's definitely so that the uh, Finnish people have their own notion of sauna, which is pretty much like uh, strongly ingrained. And uh, it's very then, then for them, very easy to tell that this is not a, a kind of Finnish sauna or not a proper sauna at all. And this is uh, okay. And this is kind of in my sweet spot of what sauna should be like. But there are a lot of kind of factors here. So for instance, in Finland, people, um, a lot of the people kind of have a preference towards uh, wood burning saunas. And uh, my kind of personal argument and kind of uh, interpretation of this uh, situation is, is such that people have actually what they do have preference for is the uh, have this kind of sauna experience that's embedded and located in nature. Because a lot of the wood burning uh, saunas that you can find are actually like the one I'm currently here sitting in is somewhere in the rural Finland, whereas the people are normally uh, living in, in cities. So there's actually a lot of things, different things going on when the people are experiencing these wood burning saunas. They have made a trip somewhere. Uh, it's probably their spare time, so they're not kind of busy and stressed out. And uh, in order to just uh, heat up the wood burning sauna, you need to take time to prepare. Whereas uh, in a lot of other circumstances, the sauna is much more like a commodity. And this wood burning sauna experiences are more like a, like a, everyday luxury in, in a way that it's not kind of unusual because the saunas are so ubiquitous so it's then hard to find but it's it still kind of makes them stand out and different did this answer your question yes yes definitely definitely yeah i've I mean, always I, i've always wondered like what would it be like to use an electric sauna that was like a log sauna set right on a lake in nature you know like you said the setting is very different it's, you know, pretty rare. Like I've never even run across a sauna like that. Um, yeah, there are, there are few, uh, such uh, in Finland. I've been to quite a few of them actually, particularly the saunas that are being, uh, that are in shared use, but also uh, private individuals. Like well, I have a, my old colleague uh, who is currently a professor. Uh, he actually decided to put an electric heater in his um, like cabin sauna just last summer. And um, he's very much uh, looking forward to kind of demonstrate me how great it is. And um, one of the reasons that he had is that uh, people have become, a few people actually have in Finland become much more aware of the different kind of negative consequences uh, of burning, uh, burning wood, uh, particularly for like, uh, different kind of fine particle emissions and things like that. So some people might kind of choose um, in, in this combination for the fact that they are uh, trying to be more environmentally aware with the choices. But uh, I'd say that uh, then there are a few like uh, public saunas, uh, such as in the Helsinki area, a place called Furuvik in uh, Ranta Sauna. Uh, uh, which is on, on lakeside and a few other um, saunas that are on the uh, seaside, which I'd say um, work perfectly well uh, with the electric heater. So it doesn't kind of, if, if all the other things are kind of uh, like the ventilation, for instance, if, if, if that's kind of solved, then I don't think it matters that much how you actually heat up your sauna. But then this actually has to do with the uh, kind of Eros first question. So, so that, um, in order to kind of answer the, uh, what, what sort of makes up a nice sauna experience. Uh, sauna experience is of course a subjective thing. So um, the only thing to kind of uh, find that out is to ask someone whether they had a nice sauna experience or not. But as a sauna designer, and uh, sometimes even a builder, I myself have been approaching the uh, matter from like uh, this kind of model of four different dimensions. Um, and those dimensions are heat, air quality, interior design and the sound of culture and sound of company. And out of those four things in my own writing and in my own thinking, I mostly kind of concentrate on the first three ones because they are the kind of parts of this kind of built environment that we can create in order to support uh, the emergence of great sound experiences. So as sound designers, we need to think about how we're gonna heat up the sauna. Um, there are a lot, of, lot of, a lot of details about this. It's not only about the heater, although a lot of it depends on that, it's, it's kind of a very big thing. Air quality, and that comes down to ventilation usually. Uh, also another major factor in order to succeed with your sauna design. And then all the other matters which relate to the interior design, how the sauna will look like, how the benches are made, if there are any benches and so forth. 
And uh, I think they are all, uh, this, is, this is kind of like um, interconnected triangle in a way that in order to kind of, if you start changing one way about how you heat up your sauna, you need to also usually change the ventilation. You might need to be also changed uh, the way you have like do your benches and so forth. So it, it's, a, it's like a kind of nice interconnected, actually not that difficult, but still kind of requires some um, thought. So uh, th this is kind of the way I approach when I try to figure out, for instance, if someone, uh, I do some consultation. And when I have like consulting clients, I usually use this framework in order to figure out if they say that they have got some issues in the sauna, if they, have, they haven't already figured out themselves, what's the matter. Uh, this is the way that I kind of try, uh, try to kind of triangulate which direction of these three things is probably the most, uh, the biggest problem. The um, most of American traditional saunas nowadays are electric heated and uh, only a fraction are, are wood burning. And also like in the state of California, you can't even sell wood burning heaters anymore. Uh, and, and this obviously has its, uh, its own, own uh, you know, questions or consequences. And so, so if, I, if I stereotype a lot, I admit, but, but you know, stereotypically, most of the American saunas are built in basements and uh, with electric heaters so are we well, I'm, I'm trying to stick with the same topic but but what are the soft spots of a uh, sauna in the basement next to maybe and for understandable reasons next to your exercising gear and exercising machines what are the soft spots what what a person who maybe wants to maybe get to the next level so to speak you know to build that sauna experience what what should be thought about well and before we get there before we get there for the basement sauna and the the considerations there i think we also should mention that that like generally american sauna is like the hotel we used or the gym one you know the sign don't put water on the rocks or the infrared one that the celebrity is you know is promoting but there is in uh in north america great lakes regions and some other regions there are some belts of like really good sauna culture um, that don't get mentioned very often. But like you said, Arrow, most of them are cedar closets or something in a basement. And, you know, so back to the basement sauna. Yeah, or, or a really expensive piece of gym equipment that they use for 15 minutes after their workout and, and their sauna enthusiasts now because they have one. But that's right. I talk to a lot of that crowd and I, I, I always tell them, you know, Hey, th this is, there's more to that, more to this than, than just, uh, you know, loosening up your muscles for a quick workout or, or vice versa. So I always try to tell people, Hey, th there's more, there's more to sauna than, than, you know, a, a quick fix because nothing about sauna to me should be quick. Mm. If you let me speculate a little bit about the basement sauna and its potential problems, I think uh, probably the number one issue that we would run into uh, in terms of the sauna experience is probably about the ventilation. Because um, a lot of these uh, type of like uh, prefabricated sauna units that you can basically plug into your, if you have like a enough big basement or some other uh, empty space, you can just kind of get this uh, cubicle and then stuff it in uh, to the back corner of your gym area and there's a sauna for you. So I think uh, a lot of those things seem to be uh, lacking out or any kind of proper, properly thought ventilation. Sometimes they might have like a single bench, but that's uh, not kind of uh, even halfway through the solution. So that's probably one of the per, uh, most likely uh, reasons if, if the sauna doesn't feel very comfortable. Also, there's another, another kind of thing um, issue is that if the sauna is very small and it has an electric heater, uh, you uh, basically run into different type of um, issues or at least discomfort uh, factors that come from your kind of being seated too close to a heater. Because, uh, you know, um, uh, a, lot, a lot of the sauna physics is very simple uh, thing that you learn in high school. And one of the things about it is that if you have like a uh, very uh, hot heat source, it creates kind of this kind of radiant energy that basically goes, uh, you can imagine like being like a um, balloon that expands. 
So, but the closer you are to the point, you get actually uh, extremely lot of uh, radiant heat, which is actually the infrared energy. Uh, but so, so those who didn't know that the actual the Finnish sauna is actually also uh, infrared sauna, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the closer you get to the heat, the more you actually up uh, getting the energy directly as radiation, even though you don't see it, but you definitely feel it. The smaller the ca uh, the cabin is, so I think those are the probably like um, two most um, likely issues that you will encounter in this type of environment. Maybe the third thing that doesn't uh, necessarily affect your experience right away is that, um, which has to do with ventilation, because if the unit, if the sound unit is not connected to any mechanical ventilation of the whole, whole house, you may later, sooner or later experience problems, particularly if you actually do use water and create steam, is that uh, what is going to happen with the water vapor inside your building? Where does it go? So uh, it might kind of cause different kind of structural issues, which doesn't really affect your sauna experience before there's actually mold or other uh, kind of unwanted consequences of uh, too much humidity. But uh, it's definitely something that you should kind of uh, pay in, uh, attention to if you are using this type of sauna or uh, planning to get one. Now, before we uh, jump into our next question, I have to uh, kind of uh, take a little bit of a break because I need to, uh, I have a heater here, but I have to fire it up. So I will kind of let you recruit for a couple of minutes. I will kind of turn the camera so you'll see what I'm doing. Uh, so you can think about what you're going to ask next because we've already been running 30 minutes. So you uh, might like to think about the priority of the questions because otherwise we'll probably be here two hours. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, then what's the problem? Yeah, yeah. I'll you go don't, grab a couple uh, beers and and we'll, I, I got nothing else on the docket today. And, and Lassie doesn't really want to sound a bit either, so he wants to talk to us first and foremost. But that's kind of actually that's an interesting thing that Lassie just said about that steam issue. I've never thought about that because uh, it's a, it's like traditional sauna is pretty dry. So it is like it doesn't create moisture, but does the does what so called load does it create moisture? Is that like, is that an issue? I would have to do some. I mean, either tests or or talk to some some more professionals on it because, I mean, really, are we getting more than fifty percent humidity in our you know in our sauna session with inside that room? I I I have a hard time believing it's more than thirty um just because of the high the heat temp so um you know depending on your climate and depending on you know where your sauna is positioned in your house i think you know that that definitely is something you should think of but i i don't know if it's as severe if if vented properly how much moist air is is exiting your sauna uh, comparative to the humidity in your in your house already i know down here in the in you know the southeast um, I can't get my house below 50, 60% humidity if I tried. Um, yeah. And that's with a dehumidifier, you know, built into the HVAC system. So it, I, 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 I don't know. I, I would probably say I would be okay because anything exhausting would be lower than 60% humidity. Um, now, granted, do I want that blowing right into some dead space in my wall? No, um, you know, I, I probably want that properly vented either out into the outside of the room or, you know, through, you know, ductwork or piping or something to get it outside. I, I wouldn't want any, any sort of, any sort of warm air, um, if it has any humidity to it, to go inside of a dead space between drywall or insulation. Um, I, I think you're begging for issues then. Well, and then also like, I would also say it's worth considering what's your practice at the end of your sauna session. You know, we'll usually throw another piece of wood in, you know, maybe open the door for a bit. Um, that way, you know, it gets a chance to dry out. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, a lot of people aren't using much water and not even hardly any water on the rocks. So, you know, for the majority of North American sauna users who don't, you know, they're probably not going to run into much issue. Um, I yeah. do think, I do think the ventilation, if you don't have enough ventilation, here's my untrained theories is that that expanding air needs a place to go. Um, and if you don't have any ventilation down below, 
it's not going to want to come down. You know, it's it's going to expand up, but the steam, my guess would be that the steam isn't going to come down as low. Um, Lassie, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> there's definitely this kind of a old Finnish adage or saying about the law of load, which uh, basically is telling you that particularly if you're building a sauna, which has uh, this kind of natural ventilation, you are going to uh, basically, the load is going to be trapped in the upper layers of the sauna room, uh, somewhere above the kind of top level of the heater. And this is kind of funny thing because it, to some extent, it seems to be a uh, hold true. It doesn't, uh, particularly when the sauna is just heating up or has, has just heated up, it seems to, it usually describes the situation pretty well, unless there's kind of a fully mechanical ventilation in place. But for naturally ventilated saunas, that's usually the situation. And um, there are things that make, can make it worse. There are things that can make it better. But I think um, generally uh, you always, as a person trying to enjoy the sauna, trying to be as high above, high up in the sauna room as possible in order to avoid this issue. So what's the, what, what, you know, what's the downside of that ventilation? So it's just like, if, if you don't really have ventilation, what's the problem? What happens? Yeah, I think when I talk to people, the way I try and describe it to them, well, first of all, you feel it like that sauna we used in the hotel. I didn't feel, I, could, I feel like I couldn't stay in very long. I didn't feel great. Um, it's kind of that invisible element of how long can I stay in the heat and how well do I feel? And I think if you're not paying attention to that, you don't connect that to good ventilation. Mm -hmm. But but I think the way that we do sauna in North America usually is we don't have much thermal mass. There's not a lot of rocks. There's 12 rocks on the heater. It's really small. It's electric. And yes, then we have heater. really thin paneling. So it's not a lot of like wood mass. So if you if you're not capturing that heat, then you have to contain it, you know, and then ventilation is your enemy. So that's why I try and think about it with those two ways of capturing the heat in the rocks, like a battery or in the the thick wood walls. And if you capture all that heat, then it's not a big deal, right? You could let it you can let some of it out because you, it's the rocks in the whole room will be still giving off that heat. Um, there was a up in the UP, there was an older Finnish guy that said, I like a drafty sauna. And when I first heard that, I was like, that's crazy. You're letting all your heat out. But as I've used sauna more, I think I'm starting to understand that better. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, the, from the, the pre, you know, the pre-built kits, you know, with their one little slat vent that is only in one position. Um, you know, it, I feel like in North America, a lot of people just don't understand that they, they think they, I think probably more people are more accustomed or have seen probably steam showers compared to saunas in North America. And the idea with a steam shower is you need that hermetically sealed. You need to keep that steam in there or you're going to lose, you're going to lose it. And I, I don't know if maybe it's that sort of mentality in the in the in the hot room where, oh, I, I got to keep all that hot air in yep. there. And I can't let any cold air in and I can't let any of it out. So maybe that's a, maybe a parallel that some people are drawing because so often it's it's bath, it's bathing, it's it's usually sold together or packaged together or people see saunas in bathrooms so often. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with a, with a sauna in your bathroom, but um, I, I think that it's creating those parallels subconsciously for a lot of people. I, I think one of the issues here is that, uh, that when, so I, I think we all agree that when you have that stereotypical, I'm stereotyping here again, when you have that sauna in the basement, and you use it as a pre-workout, uh, you know, muscle relaxer or whatever, you're missing out because that's not what saunas are meant to be used for. And, but then on the other hand, if you spend 10 minutes in that room, hot room, pre-workout, does it matter that there's no real ventilation? Does it, does it make a difference? Not really. Yeah, that that's the, the the kind of the joy of well, and, and it's not our joy, but it's the users. You know, they're 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 dictating 
um, the design and functionality of, of saunas because of their practices. So if, if ventilation doesn't, isn't important, it won't, it'll be, you know, over time, it will become less important because people are only using these for, like you said, 10 minutes at a time where it doesn't matter. Um, you know, it, it, I think it is, it's up to us in this group and, and like-minded individuals like this to make those things more important because they are so important. And perhaps this is a result of the history. Maybe Lassie can fill in some of the gaps here in my understanding, but I think it started to catch on worldwide from the uh, exposure through the Olympics and Finnish athletes were, uh, I was just reading an article about this recently, yeah. like crushing our athletes, even though they had way fewer athletes, they were getting great medals. And then they would bring the sauna with them to the Olympics. And people were like, Oh, that's interesting. That must help them athletically a lot. And we have a predisposition for health fads in North America. And then sauna, I think kind of became, one of those, you know, oh, it really helps Finnish athletes. Maybe this will be the new health health thing that you should, yeah. you know, participate in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's kind of a one period of international recognition of the Finnish sauna that happened in the early 20th century, uh, from like something like 1918 to the Berlin Olympics in 1934. Uh, in which uh, <clears throat> the Finnish athletes, particularly the long distance runners, uh, received a lot of uh, public, uh, publicity for their comments, how they were using uh, sauna as a way to uh, both prepare and part of also to kind of recover from the different distances they were running and when they were also kind of uh, very successful in, in their um, um, competitions. Uh, but then um, I would like to kind of comment on the previous uh, mention about the uh, air thing. It's really funny thing to say that in theory, uh, if you can lock up a person in a very small closet, they might kind of get claustrophobic. Uh, but <laughs> in the in physical sense, there's actually no need, even if you don't have any ventilation, it's going to take quite a long time before you should uh, buy any kind of like um, <clears throat> physical um before there's before you for instance there are like two things that can happen you could, uh, eventually run out of oxygen which is bad I mean, you know that and but the thing that will happen first and what for instance what uh, what happens on the international space station is that they have the uh, issue with the uh, uh, carbon dioxide because the carbon dioxide is being produced much uh, faster than the oxygen is being depleted so the, that's the kind of first problem that you should kind of uh, bump into but that also even i met some years ago a calculation but if you have person or two people in the sound room uh, like seven feet seven feet seven feet um it will take about at least 20 minutes before you could expect that there should be kind of uh, notable or significant rise of the uh, carbon dioxide level about like 1000 ppm or something like that anyhow but then again uh, i i do claim that there's something funny with the combination of the sauna conditions and the way uh, the bad air quality which might be due to carbon dioxide or not there might be also some because well, the, uh, the air quality is kind of a mystery in a way that uh, we as sound designers, we solve uh, the matter of air quality by uh, installing ventilation, making sure that there's a kind of air coming in and air going off. And that's pretty much it. So we don't really have to care about what is the source of the problem that we have. But we only know that once we have the solution in place, people will feel better, they will spend longer time in the sauna and generally much, have much better experience. Like my personal experience of what kind of initially got me started in this craziness, uh, some years ago is that well, when we bought uh, my wife we bought this cabin uh, next to the sauna uh, it had this kind of very small uh, wood-burning sauna inside but it was horrible I mean it, it, it's still definitely one of the worst experiences that I've ever had in a Finnish sauna it was first of all too small it had like too powerful heater uh, so it was uh, you need, really need to kind of back down away from the heater in order to be in there but then the funny thing was that uh, like five minutes was almost the maximum amount of time anyone could spend in there, even though you had, uh, even the temperature was still quite like a reasonable, uh, like 70 degrees Celsius, 150, something like that Fahrenheit. So it was not that hot. Uh, if it got any hotter, it became almost intolerable. And uh, 
uh, it took me quite a long time in order to figure out what, what, what was really wrong about the sauna. But in this case, I think there were several things that were wrong. Uh, it had kind of strange materials being uh, for you for a sauna space. It looked quite okay, but the, uh, the sauna had been treated in a way that it's, it, I don't think it was kind of unhealthy. So the, even though it had like this kind of lock service that I have here uh, on my background, um, the locks had been treated with some material that wasn't probably supposed to be used in a hot space. So they're probably, uh, the air quality was degraded by some kind of a release of some uh, uh, chemical stuff from this uh, varnish or whatever. And uh, the other thing was that the ventilation was awful because uh, and that's kind of uh, strange because generally people like wood burning saunas better because the wood burning saunas naturally do uh, generate huge uh, exchange of air because in order to burn like uh, about two pounds or one kilogram of uh, wood, uh, dry wood, you need to exchange um, like, um, now I'm going to revert back to the uh, metric units, you need to kind of exchange 10 cubic meters of uh, air, which is quite a lot. Um, I don't really know the conversion uh, version to cubic feet, but I think it's it's going to be substantial. So uh, whenever you do a kind of have a wood burning thing like I just have here uh, next to me right now, uh, you I actually already feel the draft because uh, there's a lot of air going to the fire. And uh, when you do, when you use wood burning heater in a sauna, you will naturally create this ventilation thing. So it commonly solves a lot of problems but not if it is kind of uh, installed or and designed um, incorrectly. And that was a problem that I had in the kind of very, uh, in the sauna that started everything. So Lassie, I, I, not to get off topic, but I, I've been dying to ask this. Um, what are your bare minimums for a sauna? I, you kind of touched on it earlier with heat and, and air and, and some kind of a layout or design. But if you were going to say, yep, this, this kind of meets my standard or, or exceeds it, what are those minimum things that you look for in a sauna when you travel? The minimum standard thing is really that I have, I have to say that I'm, I'm probably, as a person, I'm kind of flexible in, in a way that I, I mean, I do appreciate and I do kind of recognize a great sauna for what it is. But then again, I mean, for instance, over the last, um, winter time starting from like late September to the mid April, I was trying to, uh, try to kind of test to run uh, this kind of a uh, so-called portable or mobile Finnish tent sound. And I have to say that, boy, I was very lucky when I finally got to kind of um, uh, return the unit back to the uh, company who had borrowed it to me because the tent sound really had like some elements that were great because I did take the tent sauna to a few very remote locations, to very nice places like uh, to remote uh, like uh, lakeside and places like that. But it was also uh, very difficult and kind of inconvenient to operate. So um, one of the things is that it, it never kind of stayed uh, like hot long enough. Uh, you could, uh, because you could either do, do two things. You could either uh, focus on putting on enough of a firewood in order to keep the uh, tent sound of warm enough, or then you could try to uh, focus on enjoying the sound. You couldn't do both. You, either way, you lose the heat or you, either way, you, you lose the moment. So I think one of the things is that you need to kind of, uh, in terms of standards, um, I think it's, it's good that the, uh, your sound has to, uh, in terms of heat, it has to have some kind of like a, constant way to operate the sauna above something like um, 110 degrees Fahrenheit, 55 degrees Celsius. Uh, if it's a finished type of sauna, I definitely need to uh, have the opportunity to uh, create some steam. So you need to have rocks uh, or some other clever mechanism in order to create steam. Um, I don't really matter where uh, I sit or stand or lay down. I personally like to uh, lay down. So uh, that kind of, when I'm kind of designing my Next sound I've been making uh, very, uh, every kind of layout design I have starts from the opportunity to be I have this at least um, six feet of bench space in order to kind of straight uh, lay on your back. Um, these things, the kind of things are important. Also when it comes to the ventilation, there has to be some type of ventilation. Uh, so I think that's that, and that's actually more the kind of most trickiest part usually depending, Sometimes it might be totally trivial because um, the sauna will, like this kind of wood burning sauna cabin, 
it will ventilate itself very easily if you just pick a, uh, put enough big enough a hole in the uh, uh, floor. And yeah, very easy solution. <laughs> it works <laughs> very consistently, uh, but it, uh, some kind of ventilation has to exist if, if you if you're planning to spend any longer time uh, in the cell. But then I have to say that uh, when you kind of fall out of, uh, fall out of these standards, uh, you might still have some kind of nice experience, but it's just not going to be a finished sauna experience. It's going to be something else. Like I firstly, um, I've been in, in Germany in this kind of bath that are kind of resembling old Roman baths. So if this, for instance, so in the old Roman baths, they had different types of hot rooms. And one of them, uh, these is kind of mild, um, I'd say like, um, probably like 100, 110 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, uh, no humidity, it's just very hot, uh, or not so hot, but uh, warm, and then there's kind of strong ventilation, uh, which I, I, it gives quite a pleasant feeling, at least in my opinion, but it's not a sound. <laughs> so so, th so this, this is the thing. I, I have like my own kind of definition of what fits into the good sauna, but I also can appreciate things that are not sauna, uh, but I just don't call them like, like that. For instance, the infrared cabins are one such thing. Hey, very briefly, let, let's do a poll. So, so we are talking about this sauna bathing experience, and and but what is yours? Like, let's all answer this question. What is your sauna bathing experience? What is a normal sauna bathing process for you guys? Well, I could start. Um, so, our wood burner, it would be preparing usually the day ahead of time. If it's cold enough overnight, fill up the cold plunges. Um, so they can chill out overnight and then um, preparing the wood, have that all ready to go. Then the next day, hopefully it's just lighting a match to start that that heater. Um, ours is a two. The one we built was a two story sauna um, and the stove is probably a little undersized. It probably in it's uh, the woods about three and a half inches thick. So it takes us like an hour to kind of get up to temp, but really an hour and a half is better to kind of let everything warm up well. So then it's that process of me heating that up. Then usually people arrive and we'll spray down with cold water first and then um, go in and enjoy the the heat. Usually we're doing steam pretty, pretty much right away. We, you know, we teach a lot of, we introduce a lot of people to sauna. So we have them using cold water in the, in the hot room to cool down and then we'll just do rounds of that with cold plunge in between and then usually some sort of meal of grapes sausage potatoes you know maybe beer um and then that that's kind of our process usually about three hours in total for everything yeah that that'd be ideal um you know sometimes i have enough time to 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 give it that all but i think my most you know stereotypical uh sauna session for me would be you know i also have a wood burner um i like you know either like getting off work or or whatever i'm doing out in the shop you know i like chopping you know chopping up some wood getting that fire started maybe finishing another project while the sauna you know warms up um you know but for me yeah i'm definitely uh i, I cycle in and out you know it, it's in for you know 10 15 minutes however long you know feels good i'm i'm splashing a good amount of water on the rocks i would say medium not a lot not none but i would say at least once per session i'm throwing at least a ladle on um and then going in and out you know as as it feels good so um I definitely want to incorporate more of a cold plunge or more water um to the you know the outside the hot room uh, timing, but again, I'm in a new house. I've got a hose, so uh, <laughs> that'll work. Um, but uh, yeah, plenty of cold beer and and food, you know, as needed. But for me, I think my my normal session is probably going to be right around uh, two hours. Um, but in reality, if it's a Wednesday night and I just got done working 10, 12 hours, yeah, I'm going to be lucky to get 45 minutes. I I was giving a lot of bad rap as of late, you know, being the uh, the president of the North American Sound Society. I I don't actually have a sauna here with me right now, and uh, and but uh, I know I know. But I, I was as my excuse is I was in Finland in uh, for almost the whole duration of the month of August, and I was basically sauna bathing 
every day. And but why I don't, you know, that's a lame excuse not to have a sauna, but I belong to a there's a bunch of people, normally guys getting together every couple of weeks. Um, and uh, and it's a lot of it's a social event. There's uh, depending on the on the evening, there might be two people to 15 people in the sauna. And it's it's normally. You know, my wife is not very happy about it, but uh, we I tend to come qu home quite late after the sauna. So we start around seven o'clock and I think it's about closer to midnight when I'm back home. And uh, and there's uh, there's normally there's depending on the person, there's some beer. There may be three or four or even five rounds inside the hot room. There's a fire pit. There's a cold plunge. So it's it's the whole nine yards, but it's it's a, it's a very social kind of a get together, and and obviously the outcome is that I I, I sleep like a baby who, and I feel like I'm, go ahead. who usually throws steam when you're getting together with your group. It's funny, funny enough. It it's it's like I I normally never ever do that. I don't have to do because when we started this 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 been going on for more than ten years, and and most of the guys were pretty new to sauna. Back, back, you know, when we first started, and this is all, you know, obviously only my version of things, but I didn't want to push it. So I didn't start throwing, you know, what they call the leulu, because I was expecting, you know, the us to grow organically. And now I don't have to anymore because people, are, it's, it's, it's whoever is close to the, you know, to the, to the bucket is going to do the honors. So that works just fine. But, but anyway, kind of the point, the point is that, that it's a long process. Because it's self-indulgent, you know, self-indulgence, it's it's just like, you know, it it, it and it, it and it's fantastic. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Lassi, what about you? I think uh, I have quite a few variations to how I do the sauna. I depends so much in which um, location I happen to be and with whom I, I was just having a sauna. Uh, next, which we have in Finland, in Finland, if you go to any swimming hall, particularly like public places, you always find a sauna there. And I probably now spend like um, three times ten minutes in, in the sauna, uh, going to the uh, swimming pool in, in the between. But uh, that's like only only one variation. I think um, what I'm going to share with you is that I have one thing that I've changed uh, since in these like seven years of well, kind of going uh, more deeper into the sauna, sauna world is that. Uh, because first of all, I, I've kind of uh, learned to kind of appreciate my personal uh, sound response a little better. So, uh, I've, uh, so this basically started. Because I've known this from like uh, doing recreational sports for like thirty years or something like that. And um, I always noticed that I, I'm kind of, as a person, I'm kind of uh, slow to kind of heat up. So when we uh, some, there are some guys who are, for instance, we play soccer. Uh, who will be soaking wet in five or ten minutes? Uh, that's not me. It takes about like fifteen minutes. Uh, I didn't really realize that this has any connection with sauna, but I actually read now, now later on I've realized that it does because I do actually the same thing happens to, uh, with me in the sauna. So nowadays I try to kind of take it slowly, and uh, whenever I have the peace and quiet in order to uh, start the session at my own space, I will usually go to a sauna. Um, sit down or you lay back for about 10 15 minutes when i actually start feel that i start sweating uh, and this is very important for me in order to kind of fully appreciate the sauna and kind of longer sauna sessions because if i don't do this if i kind of uh, particularly the worst thing that can happen to me <laughs> in the sauna is that i go to a kind of too hot sauna and then uh, me or someone else immediately starts to create a lot of steam and that just doesn't work for me at all. I get very kind of bad response out of it. So I definitely, I, I, I can still much appreciate people who uh, don't get sauna or who might have like bad experiences out of it because I still do get that. And nowadays, um, if I kind of uh, follow my own kind of uh, feelings and particularly know, knowing my how my body will react, uh, I do this. And then when I've kind of uh, gotten to the kind of cycle that I'm uh, fully sweating, I'm, uh, I've got a person heated up, then I'm pretty much uh, comfortable of taking up uh, much higher temperatures, a lot of steam. So um, creating steam, uh, particularly this uh, uh, in this my kind of private sauna here, 
at, at the cabin, I I usually use quite a plenty of water. I kind of personally prefer kind of low temperatures and uh, a lot of steam because uh, that's just the thing for me. But I uh, it doesn't really work that way unless I do this kind of dry sauna heat up period first. And I think that's one of the kind of uh, biggest um, um, kind of revelations that I've had in in terms of enjoying the sauna. Of course, there are, there are a lot of other things, just as uh, such as the uh, ritual for whisking, or which I do uh, occasionally, um, but not, unfortunately not that often that I, as I'd like. But um, that's a different deal. But I think this uh, the kind of uh, heating up thing is it's it's very important to me nowadays. Excellent. Hey, um, final round of questions to Lasse before we start talking about his or Lasse starts talking about his book. So uh, I'm I'm sorry I've been uh, I hope that I haven't been manipulating the discussion here. I've been asking a lot of questions, but but Christopher and Sam, do you have a shoot? Sure. Um, no, I, I'm very excited to to hear more uh, about Lassie's book and, and and what brought him about to write it. Um, you know, I'm building my own personal sauna right now, currently in my new home, um, you know, and I, I'm sure I could sit here and, and bore you all with a million of my questions. But honestly, um, I, I love hearing from, you know, experts. I love hearing, you know, how they got to where they're, be, you know, to be. But it, I think my own personal stubbornness, I, you know, I'm still going to design and build the this, this sauna the way I like. Um, I'm going to take things, you know, any things that work and then the principles, but, you know, I, I, I feel, you know, personally that, uh, the best sauna experience is the one that you build yourself. Um, because the, you've got all that pride built in, you know, and wrapped up into your structure. So, um, I highly suggest anybody that hasn't at least give it a try. Yeah, I agree with Sam. And then also it's nice because we can critique his sauna build and he's going to get really defensive. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And Lassie said there's, there's, you know, 5 million, some professionals, uh, you know, in Finland. And, and the second that I put it out on social media that I'm building a new sauna, Oh my, I got some, some, I got some feedback. I got some, some suggestions, some that weren't really suggestions. They were more like threats, but uh, <laughs> um it's it's been a really cool experience yeah i I'd, I'd be curious to know my last question lossy um what's the most interesting sauna you've used in the past year yeah that's a great question i uh, actually get, get uh, asked different kind of variations of this quite a lot but i think uh, I, I, trying to kind of uh, fix into the past 12 months uh, is very helpful so i think the most interesting place that i uh, very recently had uh, the honor to be in is place um, in like southwestern Finland, uh, close to the uh, city of Turku, in a place called Kemiö. There's a very um, kind of unique. I'd, I'd say it's probably definitely like one one of a kind in the whole world. Uh, smoke sauna, uh, which has been built. Uh, the place is called Sturfin Hova Gord, and um, the, the, this smoke sauna has been built uh, by first kind of. Uh, kind of taking out parts of like base rock. So you basically try to kind of start building almost like a cave in the rock. And then you kind of, then, then the people have um, made some kind of arrangement. So there's a natural stream and um, like a source of fresh water next uh, to the sauna. So they have rerouted uh, the stream. So it runs through the smoke sauna partially. So you get this kind of naturally um, natural pond of like cold water plunge, uh, which partially heats up during the uh, smoke sauna heating process. And then the smoke sauna itself. Uh, so it's, it's like partially a cave or a pit. And uh, the other part is like a log, uh, like a log building built out of like huge logs. And then there in the middle of it, there's like a huge black crater, which is the uh, heater. And, I think uh, I had very like high expectations towards this place. I had been uh, planning to go there for about four years. Uh, God only knows why I didn't make it any earlier. <laughs> and now we had arranged this kind of a uh, trip with like uh, about 12, 20 colleagues of mine from the place where, where I do my daily co uh, chores. And uh, it was excellent. I think, uh, I mean, it, it didn't, uh, the smoke sounders have their pros and cons, and this didn't uh, come without the cons, but 
uh, on general, I think it is, it's extremely unique to be in, a, it, uh, to just imagine being inside a very dark sauna that's still kind of heated up to about like 150 Fahrenheit and uh, be laying uh, in a pool, like a relatively cold uh, water pool, and then kind of rise from the water immediately to be embraced by the hot air. Um, I think it's, uh, it was pretty like uh, unique. And uh, they had this kind of lighting had also been kind of attended to so that the, uh, even though it's black, it basically like smoke sounds are pitch black. Uh, this place I was using this kind of very small candles, probably like 100 or 200 of those candles burning all through the different the, the sauna. And uh, yeah, it, it, I, I don't think um, in, we, we started talking about this kind of quality of steam. I don't think the quality of steam in the sauna wasn't the best I've had. Um, I've, I've been to very excellent, what I'd call like modern smoke sauna in, in the summer. And I think they are generally better and also places in, in the sauna, uh, sauna village. But um, the overall combination was just unbeatable. So. Hey, we have to. There, there. I'm sure that there are listeners out there who don't know what a smoke sauna is. So, so, can somebody do the honors and explain explain what a smoke sauna is? I I can real quick. Um, before we had metal stoves for hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of years, of just a pile of stones where the the fire was heated in amongst the pile of stones, and you would heat up these hundreds of pounds of rocks in usually like a log cabin and um and that would take several hours five six seven eight hours however long till you heat everything up and then you would put the fire out so the smoke was in there while it's heating and then you would put the fire out and let it air out so that it was safe to use and so you would have no active fire while you're using the smoke sauna and and uh, the smoke went through the th through the rocks and there was a hatch and yep. uh, out and then hence hence the darkness as Lassie was referring at excellent so finally we all have this we have it and Sam has it on his uh in his yeah there you go so you can see <laughs> so why on earth did you write this book that we all have and what do you want to you know let's let's start wrapping up what do you what do you want to convey with this book yeah first of all I have to, I have to congratulate every each and every one of you for your great page, taste in literature so you've uh, all acquired this uh well i think uh, for me uh to create this book this was kind of natural extension so uh, this book came out last year in april 2021 and um what had happened before so i basically started running this uh, uh website called saunalogia.fi uh as a blog back in 2016 and already at very early on in that project, I kind of uh, laid out my plan, how what I would like to write about in the blog about in the next upcoming year or so when I was still working on my sauna project. And uh, I had the kind of initial thought that I would kind of turn that, I might turn that into at least some kind of ebook. But um, it turned out that in 2019, I published a, a book in Finnish, which was, uh, had a little bit similar label. And um, then when I started, uh, when I was creating the Finnish book, I had the silly thought that I would be able just to translate this book and make it kind of available uh, for kind of larger audiences. Because one of the things I kind of noticed that, uh, as I was sort of, uh, saying earlier, that we've had this unfortunate thing that a lot of the kind of old masters of the Finnish sauna craft have um, more or less uh, deceased. And no one's really kind of writing up any new sauna books in Finnish anymore. But on the other hand, we still have some parts of the sauna technology are moving forward. So uh, it's not kind of completely dead scene in that sense, but no one's just documenting it. So I, uh, first of all, so my kind of uh, primary target was to kind of create this book that creates um, that documents what, what, what the Finnish uh, designers and uh, researchers truly know about the sauna at that time. But then um, I kind of uh, also realized that there is probably like a, um, six billion people living outside Finland and uh, very few people actually read Finnish so it would be great to make this, uh, this somehow kind of available for the larger um, the public but then the next revelation was that I had written a book that was kind of geared toward Finnish audiences who are as I've been talking uh, sauna native so they understand a lot of the stuff that goes on in a sauna uh, by kind of their very long exposure with the sauna system so uh, uh, 
I realized that I can't really translate the book directly into English. So I actually uh, decided to kind of then give it a fresh start, a couple of years, and um, a look, with a little bit of a help from uh, some Finnish um, uh, writing grant, I got the opportunity to start kind of restart the project and started writing a book which I uh, kind of included kind of longer uh, preface or kind of introduction to what the Finnish sign of bathing thing really is. Because I think it's very important. I mean, you can jump in straight if you just kind of your engineering mindset, you can kind of just uh, uh, jump try uh, straight into the uh, kind of explanations of how the different things in the sound work. But I wanted to have this kind of longer introduction which explains what the Finnish sauna culture today is, how it has been developing, what are the kind of major um, kind of periods of techni uh, technological development that have predated and uh, how why it is like it is today. Uh, so, um, and then the rest is pretty much uh, similar to what we what I had in the Finnish book, except that I, for instance, uh, pretty much skipped out these parts about the smoke sauna that I felt is probably a little bit too exotic to cover in this more like a general audience book. But anyhow, my kind of mission and uh, the mission I still have for the soundology is to be able to kind of help people from Earth to Mars to build better Finnish style saunas. And uh, uh, to kind of put this, all the information that I already had in Finnish, uh, to put it in English form was kind of clear uh, uh, step in this direction to make this information available so that people can learn from it and hopefully create better saunas and uh, make better decisions when uh, they're building them. Absolutely. I, I know just, you know, from, I haven't read it cover to cover. I've used it kind of more of a, you know, physician's desk reference. <laughs> um, but, you know, just from the the things that I've seen, yeah, I, I highly recommend this to anyone who is from beginner to expert um, in the sauna world, because I, I think this will open up a lot of people's eyes to what, what, a, what a good sauna takes and and why their sauna may be not functioning the way they want it to. I think it's also a great reference in that aspect is, hey, I just bought this house. It's got a sauna in it. I don't know anything about sauna. Um, but just like everything else in your house, you know, if you don't know how to light the pilot light uh, in, on your garage heater, you're going to have to learn sometime. So you might as well go to the source. Um, no, I, I really do. I, I think it's a great book. I appreciate it, Lassie. Thanks. Do you think there's a, do you think there's a progression that, you know, we were talking about the, the or I, I mentioned the stereotypically the basement sound. So do you think that there's like a process of progression that, that maybe, you know, some people, you know, maybe start with the, with the basement sauna and then, you know, once they get more used to sauna, then they will sort of like upgrade, bring it from from the basement up to uh, you know, maybe outdoors or something. Do you is is that? Do you think that that's something that might happen? Maybe, but I, I mean, it, I think it's all a matter of um, if they if they somehow get the idea that they could have a better sauna then maybe that could happen. I mean, in, in Finland, a lot of people do have these, uh, I mean, these kind of like a, uh, outdoor, even in this, these like a detached houses that might have indoor electric saunas. Some people like to build uh, this kind of small uh, sauna buildings in their backyard, just in order to get this kind of uh, possibly uh, wood burning heater. But even, even if it was an electric heater, they still want to get this kind of external building. <laughs> Uh, for the sauna, which I, I think it has its uh, like several advantages, uh, particularly well, like not right now here in Finland, it's pitch back, black, outdoors. So whenever you want to kind of visit your sauna, you have to kind of uh, expose yourself to the uh, elements of the world. And I think that going already kind of uh, begins your uh, changing your mindset uh, towards enjoying the sauna a little bit differently than if you have this kind of cubicle at the uh, corner of your gym. So I think um, I definitely hope so. Yeah, I would agree with Lassie. I think it's the question is, is it on your radar? Have you ever experienced the sound of practice? You know, I every now and again, I'll grab a taco at Taco Bell, but I've been down to Mexico. I know there's better. I know that, you know, I could seek out better. But if all you ever had was Taco Bell, you wouldn't even know that there's anything else you could look for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, I'm sorry. Sorry, Sam. Oh, no, I, I just I. 
I love that. I mean, I think that brings it really full circle to, you know, what, what we kind of talked about at the beginning is, you know, there are going to be subpar saunas out there. There's going to be really, really good ones too, but, um, you know, keeping your eyes open and, and mind open to better and newer experiences, I think is going to be huge. For me personally, the, uh, the, the access to outdoors is very important. I, I, I don't, well, I do know why, but the access to outdoors is, is fundamental. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I, I, I do. I, I, I'm, I've always had, well, and granted, this is my, going to be my second personal sauna that I'm building right now, but it's always been uh, kind of a point to be outside of the home. Uh, you know, that the walk from the house, you know, to the little shed or to the shop or to the sauna. Um, I, I don't know. I, it does. At, at Lassie coined it great. It, you, you set up your whole mindset differently. If I were to just, if I had a sauna next to my closet over there in this room, and I, and it was already ready to go. And I just stripped down and jumped in it. Yeah, it'd be great. But did my mindset change from here to there? Not really. So I, I love that, that, uh, that observation of, you know, when you step outside, you're transforming the, the experience. So I do like that. So finally, Lassie, back to your, when a person wants to purchase your book, where does he or she go to? Yeah, so the, uh, the book is uh, for one, over one year now. The book has been uh, luckily available all over the world through Amazon. So it's been uh, released on Amazon print on demand. And also, uh, the few lucky individuals who happen to uh, go across or come by Finland, you can also find, uh, so the Amazon uh, is uh, like a paperback, but you can also find this kind of hard cover edition, uh, which I printed for the Finnish Finnish audiences, which seems a little bit controversial, but a uh, few of those copies have found their way also to the US. I think Era probably has seen one of those. Yes, I but do. Anywhere, uh, anywhere in the world, you can look for the secrets of Finnish sound design on Amazon. Awesome. So, well, unfortunately, like you guys said, we could have been, or we could be going on for a couple of hours more. But I'm afraid Lassie is going to have his sauna getting ready there, and uh, and 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 we unfortunately we have to run. But thank you so much. This this is the first ever uh, recording of the Upper Bench, and there will be. We have a lot of people lined up. Uh, who actually even want to talk to us and it not so that we don't have to drag people in. Lassi, thank you so, so very, very much for taking your time to talk to us today. And, My pleasure. Uh, Thanks, Adam. And we've actually, Lassi and I, we have sauna bathed together. It was in the Allas Sauna in downtown Helsinki, actually on the island where, where, where I, I'm lucky enough to own an apartment even today. But that I'm sure that that won't be. We were supposed to meet at the at the Finnish Sauna Society, but Lassie was too busy in, in late August. But I'm I'm sure that there are new other chances to get together. Yeah, this uh, the place uh, that Aero mentioned was one of maybe the only uh, sauna in the world that has been destroyed by being struck by a ferry. Ah, yes. Yes, so it's been out of operation because uh, the, the, we're talking the about the ferry as a boat, right? Not like Tinkerbell yeah, yeah. passenger <laughs> ferry, no, yeah. like a ship. We're talking about the ship, not the ferry. Yeah, yeah I was like, <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, thanks, yeah, guys. Yeah, kind of a... go ahead. Yeah, hopefully, the next time, uh, please, uh, if you're coming by by Finland, please let me know. I think this uh, writing the book has uh, been kind of a very interesting experience because it has put me in touch with a lot of people, this variable <laughs> expertise level, uh, but there are a lot of interest in sound all around the world. So I've had quite a few new uh, clients and customers all, all around the world. So I've been designing um, a few saunas to North America, for instance, this year uh, for people who appreciate uh, getting kind of authentic Finnish sound design for their backyard. There's a movement. There's a movement now. That's hence we are here. You know, this is this exactly. There's a it, it, it and it's spreading. It's not spreading at the uh, that, that the pace that we would hope, but but it will. It will. I'm 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 adamant that it will explode finally. Thank you guys. Thank you so much.
truly appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Bossy. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Christopher. Thanks, yes. everyone. Keep up the good still... work, Bossy. Thank you. No problem. If you want. <laughs>